The new DLC for Remnant 2 has added a ton of new items to explore different builds with. Also adding in the new Ritualist class, which lets you create some very powerful combinations. I have for you today the five best builds I've put together, all centered around the Ritualist class. So let's not waste any time and show you exactly how to make them. Our first build is something I like to call the Headhunter. This makes use of the Hunter class to have much higher weak spot damage. The skill Shroud will last almost forever as long as you're dealing damage to a weak spot and it greatly increases the amount of ranged damage that you deal. We have Ritualist as our secondary class because it grants you 10% more crit chance when enemies are afflicted with a status. The skill Death Wish grants a massive damage boost of 35% as well as some solid lifesteal. It also drains your health, but we're gonna negate that with the kinship trait. For the armor, I have Zealot hat and gloves in the new Crimson Guard chest and boots, giving you a themed look from both classes. The Void Heart as your relic provides solid healing and a way to take damage on a non-tanky build, although it is only a 4 second window, adding on crit and weak spot fragments for better damage. The Crescent Moon is our weapon of choice, with its mod that fires two arrows at once and supercharger so the bow does not feel too slow to use. The Corel Axe with Stormbringer adds a bit of elemental damage that can't hurt and is easy to use. We also rock the Tech 22 with Corrosive Rounds and Twisting Wounds so you can apply Bleed and Corrosion in an instant. This gun will crit like crazy and provide two easy buffs to your bow damage. The Abrasive Whetstone increases crit when enemies have on bleeding. You have Xania's Malice for more weak spot damage, Akari Warband for more crit, the new Overpowered Ring Atonement Fold for even more crit, and lastly Faerun Sigil as the bow's high damage comes from its mod which this generates much faster. Your traits are based around dodging attacks, with Flashcaster being a must for easier skill and mod usage and ammo reserves also stopping the bow from running out of ammo. This build is an absolute monster. Against the Ravager, who had thick skin to reduce my damage and Hardy to increase his health, it still just melted him, letting you deal over 10,000 damage if your bow mod is active. You can use both your skills, apply bleed with the tech 22, and fire the bow until the fight is over. I beat several bosses with this easily, including Annihilation. If bosses have easy weak spots to target, this is an S tier build to throw on. For my Warlord build, we have a solid melee crit setup, running Challenger as main for the increase in defense and damage, offering a free revive if you happen to go down. The skills should be Juggernaut, as it's the best boost to melee damage you can get, as well as offering good defense. Ritualist will be our secondary class, increasing our crit chance when enemies have negative statuses on them. Using the skill Death Wish, you gain a huge boost to damage that can help you deal over 4,000 damage in every swing with a melee weapon. Your armor is Zealot Hat for fashion of course, and Bruiser for the rest as it's perfect when running melee. The Resonating Heart is my choice for healing as you can take it before starting up melee combat and get some good healing for the next 20 seconds, with melee crit fragments to boost your damage. The new Sparkfire Shotgun with Corrosive Rounds and Twisting Wounds easily applies statuses three different ways, helping proc your Ritualist crit bonus. World Edge is the best melee item in the game as it is the only way to efficiently take on enemies outside of boss fights and its range makes it more versatile than any other option with Overdrive guaranteeing crit most of the time. I run the Silverback Model 500 for Stagger with Song of a Fear as an excellent support mod. Switch over to Boar when you get to ground-based bosses, but for more consistent use, Song is kinda busted. The Mutator is gonna be up to you, although right now I have on Spirit Healer. As for Trinkets, you want Butcher's Fetish to increase your crit damage and chance on every charge swing. Akari Warband increases crit chance and damage almost all the time in boss fights. Probability Cord ups crit damage. Berserker's Crest increases melee charge speed and the Bisected Ring grants infinite stamina. Your traits need to have Kinship to nullify the Ritualist skill damage to yourself, Siphoner to gain health back from your sword swings, and Arcane Strike to get your mods back. This is my new favorite build in the game. You have infinite stamina, making it very easy to dodge forever. The damage is insane, and World Edge absolutely cleans house. Excellent option in boss fights, open dungeons, and in co-op as well. It offers super high crit and nice survivability that you can have a lot of fun with. Also, that fashion is borderline perfect, and come on, the free revive is clutch throughout the entire game. 
For my most fun build, you have the Vile Sith Lord. For your prime class, you want Ritualist, which will increase status effect damage and spread that damage to enemies in the area, upping your crit by 10% once again and will use the skill Death Wish to gain a large boost to damage. As your secondary, you want Archon. This provides increased mod damage and regen, which will come into play, but you mainly want this class for the skill Havoc Form. It's the ultimate lightning god mode, and I'm sure you're aware of it by now. Lots of easy damage with excellent maneuverability. For the armor, we're going to go with Labyrinth set with Leto Mark 1 gloves. The resonating heart here allows you to heal through damage while in Havoc form, and you're going to take it beforehand with the fragments for skill improvement. The typewriter with corrosive rounds and momentum deals with really good damage on its own and will guarantee you 98% of the bullets hit crit. I have on the Ritualist Scythe with Edge Lord because it's awesome, but Krell Axe is always good no matter what. Nebula will deal insane damage from its mod Nano Swarm, which will also crit and help regen our skills. Equip Maelstrom so the elemental damage you apply greatly regens the mod. Now for Trinkets, we have a neat interaction. Nightweaver's Grudge grants 20% crit chance and haste when near status afflictions. What's cool is this effect is procced by the Ring Atonement Fold. So wear both of them, and while you bleed, you're going to have a 30% boost to crit chance. Easy access to really huge damage. Burden of the Gambler bumps up crit chance even more and the damage it does as well. With this much crit, you can get Devoured Loop to regen your skills better than you ever could before. And I like Stone of Continuance so that the Havoc form will last much longer. The main traits to have are going to be Kinship to negate the Death Wish damage and Siphoner so you can heal with the Lightning damage. This build is extremely overpowered. Imagine Havoc form from before, but now with double the crit. You'll absolutely melt bosses and groups very quickly. And because you have such high crit, both of your skills will regen very consistently. Death Wish also grants some excellent lifesteal, which just fits perfectly since you can't heal while in god mode. I throw this on to clear out dungeons now, as you can float through the entire thing holding one button and watching the enemies fade away. It's very powerful, and if you apply acid to enemies beforehand, it gets even stronger. Crit has never been easier to build into, and the Vile Sith Lord takes great advantage of that. Now this Plague Doctor build goes into high cooldown to spam some really good skills. Unfortunately, the devs decided to nerf cooldown and cap it at 75 even though it has been 80% up until now, which is a really stupid change. But in reality, the 5% difference doesn't ruin the build. The idea behind this one is simple. We play into status damage while using the new Ritualist class. Equipping Miasma and Medic's shield ability allows you to tank hits often since shield is very strong, and it allows you to apply all the stat effects every 11 seconds. This means you can stack several statuses on top of each other and waste dungeons instantly. Against bosses, the damage isn't what I would call OP, but it's still good. You can beat bosses with a low damage build because that's how good statuses are now. To do this, you want to run the Energized Neck Coil for much better status damage. Then throw on Burden of the Stargazer, Burden of the Rebel, and Black Pawn Stamp for skill cooldown. Stone of Continuance helps keep your protective shield active as long as possible, which I do think you need. Then make sure to have skill cooldown on your Relic Fragments and the Concoction, which should get you up to about 80% cooldown, which again is stupidly capped at 75 now. Use the Sparkfire Shotgun to apply three statuses on top of all the ones your skill will apply. The Krell Axe will greatly increase all the status damage you deal and using creeping mist on the mp60 makes this build genuinely strong i was able to easily kill several bosses with this even in heavy dodge mode because the status damage does all the work for you as long as you keep them applied and boost the damage with the mist and krell axe the bosses on apocalypse can't take you and again shield is nuts when it comes to keeping you alive for traits, you want survivability, more defense, better dodge, glutton, increased skill cooldown, and all the things that should keep you alive in combat, surviving attacks when necessary. This is the cooldown build I've been running basically all week, and it's some of the most fun you're ever going to have. I mean, spamming a ridiculously large dark sigil is a dream come true. Lastly, we come down to a build that really surprised me. It uses statuses to the max to deal crazy damage and keep bosses ticking away forever. Basically, it's the max cooldown build, but without cooldown and damage instead. And before you go thinking, oh, well, this new item is just better, or the Blood Jewel Ring is a bad ring. Cool, that's nice that you have that opinion, but I disagree. This build works like a charm. I was getting beat up pretty bad by Venom last night on several different builds, and one try with this guy got me through. It's really nice and easy to use. So the idea revolves around using Ritualist for more status damage with its skill called Eruption. You use the two charges on this to get a ton of damage and refresh the status's duration. 
which means you can keep double stacks of status applied almost forever and deal solid damage throughout fights. We've got Alchemist because the class increases all damage by 25% and offers a skill that revives you. Since we're running light armor, it is easier to get dropped. A little preparedness can keep you in the fight through death and both classes theme well for a corrupted chemist idea. Obviously, we're running the full Zealot armor for some drip, and the Tranquil Heart provides healing over time, which I highly value on light armor builds. Your main damage source is the Black Maw with Hotshot and Fetid Wounds, applying fire and acid easily. The Corel Axe with Stormbringer is just the best option for almost every Ritualist build and greatly boosts damage applied by melee attacks. Then the MP60 with Creeping Mist and Twisting Wounds applies Bleed, and the Mist mod is quite good at boosting status damage. For trinkets, we have Energized Neck Coil to improve the damage over time. Ahane Crystal provides up to 20% more damage for your statuses and guns, which is a huge boost. Burden of Destroyer boosts all damage, and the Stone of Malevolence helps keep your status applying Hotshot and Miss Mod active 24-7. And as you can see, I'm running the Blood Jewel as well, which apparently some people think is a bad ring. Again, cool opinion, but I disagree. With this combo of items, you can shoot the Black Maw and throw the Krell Axe to apply all your statuses. I never need to shoot the MP60, as the Krell Axe is applying the bleed for me. Also, since the Stormbringer Mutator increases damage applied by melee weapons, that bleed is increased by 50%, as well as the shock that I applied. You can now swap to your SMG, just to throw out the mist, and then keep firing with the auto rifle. This build flows very well and lets you easily deal very high damage over time. I don't care what the numbers are telling you, the build works in actual gameplay, and it's crazy good. I was blown away by it, and of course you have your traits, which the big thing is going to be spirit and flashcaster, since you will be using skills and mods often. And there you have my five new best Ritualist builds. I personally tested each of them on Apocalypse Mode on several different bosses and dungeons. All of them are quite strong and very fun to play, giving you some ideas for using each of the new skills, although Death Wish is the most powerful by far, and the massive Miasma Sigil is the coolest. Ritualist spices up the gameplay in such crazy ways that you can hop back into the game and experience it in a whole new way. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did, a like down below would be amazing. These builds here were super fun to put together, and I was pretty darn excited to show them off. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.